Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We invite you to follow the English News RMI Province Essential TV channel. On September 15th, under the chairmanship of Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính, the Standing Committee of the Government have a conference with the ministries, sectors, and localities affected by Typhoon Number no. 3. At the conference, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính instructed ministries, sectors, and local authorities to actively and promptly implement a set of solutions based on their functions responsibilities, and authority. He's emphasized that they need for swift, accurate, and effective action on six major tasks and solutions to address the aftermath of Typhoon No. 3, restore production and business, and stimulate growth. The Prime Minister stressed the key objectives, which include ensuring no resident suffers from hunger, loss of clothing, clean water, or shelter, and providing essential daily needs, urgently and effectively addressing the consequences of the super typhoon, quickly stabilizing the situation for the people, both mentally and materially, effectively restoring production and business, controlling inflation, and striving for an annual growth target of approximately 7 percent, and ensuring political stability, public safety, and social order for the people, while maintaining a peaceful and stable environment for development. For urgent tasks and solutions, the Prime Minister called for a focus on searching for the missing, treating the injured, arranging temporary shelter for those who lost their homes, providing food, water, and medical care to those in need, and reviewing and assessing isolated areas to support the people. The entire political system must be mobilized to clean up the environment and prevent disease outbreaks, ensure that there are no power or telecommunication outages, maintain essential services, and immediately repair medical and educational facilities. According to data from the Children's Department of Custom, Vietnam earned $24.6 billion US dollar from exporting goods to ASEAN in the first eight months of 2024, an increase of 12.6% compared to the same period last year. Thailand remains the largest export market with a value of exceeding 5.2 billion US dollar, or 7.2 percent year on year. Foreign Thailand are Indonesia with 4.15 billion US dollar, and the Philippines with over 4 billion US dollar. In the group of billion dollar markets, export to Cambodia reached 3.52 billion US dollar, of 3.9 percent. Malaysia 3.48 billion US dollar, of 4.2 percent, and Singapore 3.46 billion US dollar showing an increase of over 26 percent. As both of these billion dollar markets, nearly 24 billion US dollar, accounting for 97 percent of Vietnam's export to ASEAN. In terms of imports, Vietnam spent over 40 billion US dollar on importing goods from ASEAN in the first eight months of 2024, a rise of 12.4 percent compared to the same period last year. Thailand was the largest import market with 7.8 billion US dollar, up slightly by 1.3 percent. The Nai Riverside Road Project and the Parts and Embankment Project along the Nai River, stretching from Hoa An Bridge to the border of Vinco District, Nai Province, are currently facing difficulties related to dismantling of military structures belonging to Regiment 935. Most recently, on August 3rd, 2024, the Ministry of National Defense issued document number 3071 requesting the People's Committee of Nai Province to direct relevant agencies to coordinate with Air Defense and Air Force Command to complete the procedures for reclaiming the defense land. The People's Committee of Nai Province has also instructed the Department of Natural Resources and Environment to lead and coordinate with People's Committee of Binghua City to urgently work with Regiment 935 to hand over the land by September 2024 regarded the ownership, verification, and identification of land users for remaining households. The province has credited the People's Committee of Binghua City to promptly address the issue related to ownership, verification, and origin identification in order to complete compensation, support, and resettlement procedures also within September 2024. Kyoto News reported on September 15th that 
quadrilateral security dialogue quad consisting of Japan, the US, Australia, and India plans to conduct joint patrols to mortar vessels in the Indo-Pacific region as part of their latest efforts to combat illegal fishing. According to Kyoto, the plan is involving the Coast Guards of Japan, the US, Australia, and India, and is expected to be included in the joint statement after the Quad Summit on September 21st. The vessel monitoring mission could take place next year, with members of Japanese Coast Guard joining their Australian and Indian counterparts aboard US Coast Guard vessels. The missions aim to enhance interoperability to maintain maritime order based on the rule of law and we continue on a rotational basis. In recent years, the Philippines and Indonesia have opposed general fishing activities in the disputed areas of the South China Sea, and Japan has raised similar concerns regarding Chinese vessels in surrounding waters. In May 2023, a joint statement from Quad Summit in Japan declared that the foreign nations support Indo-Pacific partners in combating illegal, unreported, and unregulated maritime activities. Among other areas of cooperation expected to be announced at the upcoming Quad Summit is the deployment of new communication infrastructure in the Pacific, known as Open Radio Access Networks, designed to reduce reliance on Pacific communist technology and mitigate supply chain risk. According to task news agencies, Myanmar Information Minister Maung Maung Ong said the country wants to join a British group of emergent army as an observer. Speaking to task news agency on September 15th, Mr. Maung Maung Ong said Myanmar is ready to join the British as an observer. He added that Myanmar wants to apply for full membership in the future as many countries in Southeast Asia have also applied, including Indonesia last year and Thailand in June. All stressed that Myanmar government is eager to participate in the British summit in Russia next month, although has not received an invitation. The statement was made on the sidelines of the BRICS media conference, which took place from September 13th to 17th in Moscow. Heads of state and experts from city media outlets from 45 countries attended the event. This is also the first time that a media forum has been organized in the form of a conference. Dear viewers, you have just watched the English News on Central Television Channel of my province. Goodbye and see you again.